All right, so when I look at what the market has done with regards to this news, that Mark mm. Tufani is leaving Anglo Gold Ashanti and going to Anglo American, mm. what would assume that investors are relatively happy? Is this, is this basically... Oh, very right? happy about yeah. Anglo American. I think they've been very disappointed with past leadership, and I think that's been expressed in the share price and the loss in value. Now, the, look, in all fairness, Cynthia Carroll took over at a very difficult time, but I don't think she did what uh, shareholders expected. And this is an international company. And you have to satisfy international shareholders. So I think that uh, they were growing impatient, and this was on the cards for a long time. Would this make you go in and buy Anglo? Uh, I like American? yes, I like Mark Kutafani. I think that he's done a wonderful job with Anglo American, with uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti. He's a no-nonsense man, and I think he will get the job done. And there's a lot of things that they have to do in South Africa. A lot of things they have to get right here. And the truth is, a lot of pension funds actually have exposure to anglo americans So this is obviously very important it's for It's the widest South held yeah. South African share. Anglo-American used to be synonymous with the South African economy. It was a South African economy. Of course, it's changed direction since then. But um, I, I don't think there's a pension fund. I don't think there's an individual portfolio that hasn't had uh, Anglo-American in it. Over the last year or so, yes, we've grown disappointed with it. All right, so the largest platinum mines mm. uh, in, in the world are basically held by Anglo-American, and mm. this is one of the sort of trouble areas, but it's also a strategic asset for the South African uh, economy as well. Oh. What do you think Mark Tufani needs to do? What do you think he can do to fix this? Well, I, I don't think he can do it on his own. He has to do it with government, he has to do it with labor, and he has to do it with business. Um, it's, it's fixable, of course it's fixable, but it's... Um, uh, a lot of attention has to be paid with it. Now, they're looking at it, they're reviewing it. Again, as I said earlier on, it's owned by international investors. This is not a political story. This is something they want return on capital. And Mark's got to ensure that they get that. So there might be closures. There might be tough decisions. Okay, closures, um, selling off of assets. Do you think we're going to see a combination I, of I all of that? I don't think we could see a closing off of shafts. We could see some uh, uh, retrenchments and so on. Unless Labour comes to the party, unless government comes to the party and everybody sits down and uh, gets on top of costs. And, gets, and costs include not only the direct costs, fuel costs and so on, but also Labour costs. You, know, you can't go on with wildcat strikes like we saw last year and expect this country uh, the country to flourish. You know, it needs some tough decisions. So the National Union of Mine Workers, as I mentioned in the mm. introduction, is really not happy with this appointment. Um, oh, well, you know, you Australian. can expect that. <laughs> well, they wanted a female, and, and which female do you think they would have been eyeing well, out? Eleni, in all fairness, you can't run international companies the size of Anglo-American on the basis of some uh, either gender or political ideology. You've got to try and find the right people to run mines. Mark's got the kind of track record that you need to run a place like this. So I, I, I don't know. You can't go out and say, let's look for a female. We need a, That's not how you go and choose business heads. You go and try who's going to be the right person to run this business. All right. So Mark Udafani, we know mm. for mm. a very long time, has done perhaps what uh, is basically impossible. Mm. We know that it uh, un, uh, you know, got rid of the hedge book for Anglo Gold mm. Ashanti. Mm. What it's also done is created um, social um, environmental issues that they've been um, you know, approaching yeah. quite extensively and correctly. So it seems that he's on the right path, and it seems to be quite loved by the National Union of Mine yeah. Workers and the unions overall. Will this relationship continue? He, he, you know, that's, in fact, the whole platinum industry has to do that. They're still running it very much in the same way that they did in apartheid days, you know, very much on, uh, on uh, labor, uh, you know, labor that comes in and out and so on. So you, on migrant labor, I couldn't think of the word. So they, they've been running it that way. They've got to look for more permanent labor, and they've got to start building um, townships around the actual mine and, and getting a much more uh, uh, permanent force. So yes, the industry has to be looked at. He's doing it at Anglo Gold Ashanti. Yeah. They've, they're doing it at some other mines. They've got to start applying that as well in the, in the platinum industry. We're, we're holding the BRICS Expo this year in South Africa and we also know that um, you know the BRICS nations, I know you're smiling, you probably no, don't I'd want to well, comment on no. this. But <laughs> I, do I don't know how we remember BRICS, but anyway, let's carry but, on. But do you think that we could actually see um, the whole mining industry being under the spotlight given the fact that we are perhaps losing business uh, yeah. to other to other competitors and other competitors are Brazil India Russia and China not in fact it's it's a much much more extensive uh, choice than the, only those four it's uh, it involves a whole lot of other com in our countries um, so 
we've got to look at it, you know, we've got to look at the, uh, the whole mining industry. We've lost out on the mining boom, but it's not over. You know, I still think there's another big wave coming, and we've got to be prepared for that. You know, China is by no means finished spending on infrastructure, and in fact, you've got the whole of Africa spending. So there's a huge amount of opportunity that still exists for our mines. Uh, but we've got, to, we've, we've got to get into the right shape to actually uh, benefit so from that. So what are your favorite resource players into this year, then? My best play is, uh, is BHP Billiton. Still? Yeah. I, I think that if you're going to buy one stock this year, buy BHP Billiton. I think I, I expect uh, um, emerging markets to continue to dominate uh, growth. You know, that's, I don't think you need to be a genius to know that. But um, I expect commodity prices to pick up. And uh, BHP Billiton, very, very well placed. Anglo with Mark Kutafani, if they start to address the issues, can be a very good play because it's underperformed. And you know, normally the underperformers can actually um, outperform. More room to the upside, mm. of course. Thank you very mm. much, David. Great to have you in studio.